नमो बुद्धाय दिस इज अभिनव गुलेच एंड आई वेलकम यू आई कंटिन्यू माय लर्निंग्स ऑन द धम्मपाद वर्सेस एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी कैप्चरिंग माय लर्निंग्स फ्रॉम वर्स 361 टू 380 यू कैन चेक द धम्मपाद प्लेलिस्ट दैट इज अवेलेबल ऑन द ऑन माय चैनल फॉर ऑल द वीडियोस ऑन द धम्मपाद वर्सेस आई एम रेफरिंग दिस बुक द धम्मपाद बाय एकनाथ ईश्वरन फॉर माय रीडिंग इट्स अ वेरी गुड बुक यू कैन रेफर दैट फॉर योर रीडिंग टू now in this uh, from 361 onwards uh, the theme of the the verses is uh, bhikshu right bhikshu right so who is a bhikshu bhikshu basically is the person in, in a monastic order right in the buddha's monastic order so in the buddha's time see what buddha realized at his time was that the best way to achieve liberation is to leave the family and uh, join the monastic order and leave everything and bhikshu is a person bhikkhu in pali the word is bhikkhu in sanskrit it is hindi it's uh, bhikshu is a person who begs for alms right who you know who is just relying on the alms who has you know left uh, all the material possessions and everything right but here in the commentary uh, it is referred that the what the buddha refers as bhikshu it also applies to lay people who who have you know devoted themselves to the teachings of the buddha and who just accept whatever comes in life so it's like a person uh, you know who doesn't desire lot of things and who is just you know the life is running for them you know it's like an autopilot and they are focused on the spiritual teachings of the buddha and following those teachings and they accept whatever comes their way even that even that person buddha classifies them as a bhikshu because they they have the qualities of the bhikshu buddha says it's not necessary to wear the monk's robe and everything and leave the world you can still better monk the better person who is a true monk is one who follows the path that i have given the five precepts the noble eightfold path right so with that intention we should study these verses so verse, so i start with 361 verse 361 buddha says train your body in deeds train your tongue in words train your mind in thoughts this training will take you beyond sorrow right so buddha is again referring to training our mind our speech our body right so that our actions are correct our words that flow out of our mind, mouth are correct our thoughts are correct because everything that we do creates a karma a thought impulse creates a karma and then which which we will have to bear the consequences of our karma and we cannot escape so it's all about training so this points back to the uh, relevant uh, paths in the noble eightfold path like you know when you talk about the body it's basically right action right right action training your tongue in words right speech training your mind in thoughts right mindfulness or right thinking right so it all goes back to the noble eightfold path verse 362 onwards buddha talks about the qualities of a true bhikshu a true bhikshu so buddha says he is a true bhikshu who has trained his hands feet and speech to serve others he meditates deeply is at peace with himself and lives in joy so what so it applies to all of us meditate friends we all have to meditate it's like a wake up call i am giving to myself as well as to you start becoming more find out more and more time to meditate be with yourself calm your mind be in joy when see our when my mind is calm when we are still automatically the joy flows out from us it's not that there is another switch that we need to press somewhere uh, uh, that for the joy to flow out it's just we have to make ourselves calm do not dwell in hatred i have made a separate video on how to stop negative thoughts where, uh, where i have captured what buddha gives the techniques to stop negative thoughts check out that video also so and meditate more and i have see my video on meditation insight meditation start practicing insight meditation every day if you have any queries do put the comments in the comments Uh, and start practicing the meditation verse 363 buddha says he is a true bhikshu who keeps repeating his mantram lives simply and explains the dharma in sweet words so he keeps repeating his mantram i am not very sure right my limited understanding uh, is that buddha did not give any mantra as such but i don't know as such what's the meaning of this so maybe if any one of you has you can put in the comment section lives simply 
right live simply without any ex extravagant things and you know in sensual pleasures but lives simply explains dharma in sweet words that means even what my understanding is that he spreads the dharma in simple words to other people right so there are like four kinds of uh, lay followers that buddha has talked like first one is that who neither follows the dharma nor encourages others to follow second is who neither doesn't follow the dharma encourages others to follow third is that follows himself but doesn't encourage others to and fourth is follows himself but also encourages others so i have made a separate video on who is a lay follower uh, as per buddha and uh, different types of lay followers so what we have to do is that we have to practice the buddha's teachings at on our, on our own do our meditation follow the five precepts and maybe more precepts as if you are a, a monk and try to you know share this knowledge with others also because somewhere someone is there who can come on this path who can hear your words and who may be encouraged to come on the buddha's path this knowledge that buddha has given should not get lost and this is why i am making all these videos because i feel that you know this precious knowledge that has not got lost it has to be rejuvenated right so okay verse 364 he is a true bhikshu who follows the dharma meditates on the dharma rejoices in the dharma and never falls away from the dharma so a true bhikshu is following the who follows the dharma meditates on it contemplates you know so what what i can say from my learning my journey is on this path is that as i have you know started making these videos on dharma path and other you know discourses and lot of videos and more and more learning on buddhist knowledge i am becoming more contemplative that you know so i am not able to 100% follow with the teachings so sometimes what happens is that you know my speech may be harsh but then i immediately get to reflect on myself that you know is it what you know the wrong that i have spoken so that contemplative quality and you know will come only when we delve deep into the teachings so it requires hard work you cannot say that i will follow with the teachings but i will not do any meditation i will not do any reflection then how will you practice you need to devote some time of the day and you know a lot of things what you can do is that you can just if even if you are commuting you can meditate just focus on the rising and the falling of the breath right nobody can stop you from focusing on the rising and falling of the breath this is meditation meditation is not something you know out of the world listen to some knowledge listen to my the dharma dharma talk just through your earphones who is stopping you from that but some effort we need to make to be in the dharma meditate on this dharma right okay verse 365 buddha says he is a bhikshu who is content with what he receives and is never jealous of others those who are jealous cannot do well in meditation this is very very important for all of us you know just reflect on you know what are the unfulfilled desires that i have of money of really my money should my money my power should be of this level my relationship should be of this level where these things are coming from is the conditioning given by the society that this is how things should be and if things are not like this then it is not it's not life is not up to the mark and that keeps us bound into this cycle we are always in this cycle of desiring 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 regretting 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 and suffering 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 so we need to come out be content so what see my understanding is and what my aspiration is that let us be bhikshus in this life so okay we cannot wear the robes we are not allowed to wear the robes but in this t-shirt that i am wearing and in the, so it's like i am a monk in the t-shirt and jeans a monk in the jeans right so we like we have to be like that content with whatever we receive and not be jealous with anyone see everyone is on their karmic path everyone is on their path they have done some good karma in the past and what what they are reaping now and if we are seeing some suffering we are because we are reaping the karmas of our bad actions so let that let that balancing happen and we what our task is just to see things as they are vipassana insight 
practicing inside meditation not only on the mat but in the daily life just seeing things as they are what is arising right now what is arising right now hatred is arising craving is arising watch the body watch the sensations as it arises right now this becomes our practice so and not be jealous because people who buddha says people who are jealous cannot do well in meditation verse 366 367 368 are combined buddha says even the gods praise the bhikshus who are contented and live a pure life of selfless service free from the desire to possess people and things he does not grieve over what is not with friendship towards all and faith in the buddha's teachings he will reach the holy state where all is peace how beautiful a lot of learnings so buddha says even the gods praise the bhikshus so even the gods see gods who are in the higher realms they are enjoying the pleasures for them there is very less motivation to liberate themselves from suffering very less motivation to hear the dharma and in the higher realms what i have heard is that they cannot even hear the dharma what we can do so as a human we are very precious and even in human realm if we are in the buddha's teachings and following the teachings then we are like the most in the most precious people so even the gods praise bhikshus who are contented so that contentment we need to arise in us live a pure life of selfless service that means do service which is selfless so what i have observed is lot of times when we do any activity there is always this desire that what i will get from it it is comes so yes we need to do our jobs and do everything but somewhere we need to do something you know aside from our job which is like a selfless thing where we will not get any particular return the return we will get but we will not search for the return right free from the desire to possess that gives pain so we are free those who are free from the desire he does not grieve oh what is not does not grieve friendship towards all maitri maitri right friendship in hindi word is maitri and faith in the buddha's teachings having a strong faith in the teachings he will reach the holy state where all is peace how beautiful verse 369 buddha says bhikshu empty your boat it will go faster cast out greed and hatred and reach nirvana so buddha again this is not only for the lay for the for the monks it's also for the lay people so when when buddha says bhikshu he is addressing to you and me buddha is saying empty your boat empty your boat of what not the possessions so you may empty the possessions and everything and go into a monk or go into forest or a monastery but the things are there in your head what buddha is saying empty your mind of all these desires so what my strategy is that one thoughts of lust greed hatred come and they come i cannot control over it because those latent things are there in me i don't have a control of when they arise but when they arise i like just use a kind of blackboard like a teacher you know uses the blackboard to clear the blackboard so they same way i just clear them in my mind and i become free of them right so that we we need to empty our boat keep on empty it's like it's like a boat in which water is filled so till help arrives or till we reach the other shore what you do is that you take out the water and you know uh, put out of the boat this is just you know analogy that i just have made up right now so similarly we just need to keep emptying our boat keep emptying our mind of all these desires and the greed and and the and the cravings cast out greed and hatred and reach nirvana verse 370 overcome the five obstacles rise above the five selfish attachments and you will cross the river of life so here buddha has basically saying the five hindrances the spiritual hindrances desire ill will hatred right drowsiness sloth all these things that come in our practice we have to overcome these obstacles rise above the selfish attachments and you will cross the river of life so understanding that when we practice these things will come desires will come lust will arise thoughts will come so you have to overcome all these verse 371 buddha is giving the importance of meditation meditate bhikshu meditate do not run after sense pleasures do not swallow a red hot iron ball and then cry i am in 
create pain. So what happens in the lower realms, a visual description of what happens is that, you know, there are a lot of intense suffering that a person experiences. And one of the sufferings is swallowing a red hot iron ball and which, you know, till the time it goes out from your system, it creates this intense burning and pain. So why swallow the red hot and what is the red hot iron ball in our daily life? It's the running after the sense pleasures. So not run after the sense pleasures. Allow, accept whatever is coming and going. Things are arising and falling in your life. Do not hanker over anything. Do not find, do not find joy in anything. The joy is right here, right now. And our job is to meditate, meditate, meditate. Right? Verse 372 Buddha says, There can be no meditation for those who are not wise and no wisdom for those who do not meditate. Growing in wisdom through, meditate, through meditation, you will surely be close to nirvana. So Buddha is talking here about this loop. So it's like, uh, you know, what did the, what, which thing come, came first, chicken or the egg? Did the chicken come first or the egg come first? So this is like always this confusion. So again, if you, there can be no meditation for those who are not wise. If you are not wise, then you don't get meditation. You cannot be meditate. And if there is no meditation, you cannot become wise. So definitely there is this loop that is there. So what we, me and you, what we need to do is that start doing the meditation. Right? We cannot wait to become wise. This is just my understanding. Start doing your meditation and at the same time, and the wisdom will arise in you. At the same time, be in the Buddha's teaching. Right? Whichever way you want to, you want to directly read the sutras. I have made a video on how to directly read the sutras. If you want to directly follow Buddha's teachings, start studying. I made a separate video on beginner's guide to study Buddha's teaching. Whichever way. Or if you want to like watch my videos, just target watching one video of mine every day. Only one video, which is like mostly 10 to 15 to 20 minutes maximum. And be in the knowledge. Share your thoughts, share your reflections. Join the telegram group, the discussion group that we have. The link is there in the link tree. Um, the link tree, uh, link bio is there in the description. Join the telegram discussion group. Share your reflections and your thoughts. Be in this spiritual community of people. And just be in knowledge. Because what that will do is that it will generate wisdom in you. So one end you are doing meditation which is creating wisdom and one end you are also doing meditation, uh, wisdom, wisdom is also arising which will help you in your meditation. Right? So both ways we have to do. Verse 373 Buddha says, When a bhikshu stills his mind, he enters an empty house. His heart is full of the divine joy of the dharma. Understanding the rise and fall of the elements that make up the body, he gains the joy of immortality. So we have all these elements, earth, water, earth, water, fire, space, air, right? All these five elements are there. They keep arising and falling. What, what I think is that I think that I am there as a separate entity, as a self, whereas I, there is no self. My body is changing, my mind is changing, my perceptions are changing, my consciousness is continuously changing. What is basically happening is that these elements rise and fall on their own accord. And I mistake them as to be a person that this is Abhinav. I think of Abhinav as a separate self. And this is what Buddha's teaching is. That just watch the arising and falling of all these elements. And this is insight. So practice insight meditation. Check my video on my channel on Inside Meditation. Start practicing Inside Meditation every day. Right? But stills the mind, he enters an empty house. His heart is full of divine joy. So just we have to still our mind. Still our mind. And the joy flows out. Verse 375-376. Buddha says, Learn to be wise, O Bhikshu. Train your senses. Be contented. Follow the teachings of the Dharma and keep pure and noble friends. Be a friend of all. Perform your duties well. Then, with your joy ever growing, you will put an end to sorrow. So what Buddha says, train your senses, be contented, follow the teachings of the Dharma, perform your, be a noble, be, keep pure and noble friends, don't have bad friends. 
Four things. Fifth is be a friend of all. Matri towards all. Sixth is perform your duties well. These six things we have to do. Right? Verse 377-378 Buddha says, As a versica plant sheds its faded flowers, O Bhikshu, shed all greed and hatred. Shed all greed and hatred. He is a Bhikshu who is calm in thought, word and deed and has turned his back upon the allurements of the world. So, two things Buddha says. Shed all the, like a plant sheds its faded flowers. We also need to shed. So, we have hatred and guilt and lot of these things accumulated from so many years and years. So, we need to just drop them. Start dropping this hatred and everything. Have friendship towards all. Do not have hatred towards anyone. Do not carry grudges. He is a bhikshu who is calm in thought, word and deed and has turned his back upon the allurements. Right? Calm in thought, word and deed. That we have to do. Verse 379 and 380. Here we close in this, this video. Raise yourself by your own efforts, O bhikshu. Be your own critic. Thus self-reliant and vigilant, you will live in joy. Be your own master and protector. Train your mind as a merchant trains his horse. So, Buddha fundamental teaching is be your own savior. There will be no one who will come and who will shower his grace on you or you know, give you a shortcut or give you some mantra or give you something to liberate yourself. You have to make your own effort. You have to train yourself. So, we have to be self-reliant and vigilant. Be your own critic. That is what we have to do. This self-inquiry, the contemplation thing, you, we can do everyday journaling on where I am doing going right, where I am going wrong. Every evening, you can just reflect. Am I following the path correctly? What changes I need to bring? Be your own critic. Be your own master and protector. Train your mind as a merchant. As a merchant who buys a horse. So what he does first? He trains them because that merchant, if he wants to travel from one village to another, if that horse is untrained, then he will only face a problem. That way we have to train our mind. Because if we don't train our mind, that mind will create problems more and more. So, very important, we have to train our mind. So, this is it. 380, 361 to 380 is completed. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you in some way. Do share your thoughts, your reflections, your learnings, your feedback in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddha, Namo Buddha.